Hey friend, this is Brandon here from This Is Tech Today, and we're here to check out the Google Home Hub and to find out if it's worth your hard earned dollar. Of course, if you wanna get your hands on it, there's a link down below in the description. You're watching my smart home series. Make sure to check out the other videos in the series in the link down below in the description or the card in the corner. And please share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to be notified of when I post a new video. All right, let's jump into it first by looking at the design. I don't know if you noticed, but this thing is tiny. It's actually kind of cute. It honestly looks really clean and basic in a good way. It blends in with your furniture and your surroundings. And it looks kind of like a picture frame, which is a really great feature. There's a nice cloth back onto it, which is common with other Google Home devices. And there are some rear facing speakers. Along the back, you'll see a manual mute switch for the microphone and then some volume toggles. Also, there's no camera on this. So that may be a really great thing if you're concerned about adding more cameras to your home. So let's talk about this tiny seven inch screen. The screen resolution is 1024 by 600, but don't let the resolution bother you at all. At a normal distance, you won't notice too much of the pixels. Of course, if you get really close, you can notice the pixels, but most of the time you're not that close, so you won't notice that much. And in terms of the quality of the display itself, it's really good. I can't really see any sort of color shifting at all when rotating it. It just looks good. And in many ways, it kind of feels like you're touching the picture itself. So I'm not sure what they did here, but they picked a very good display. As a whole, the colors look accurate and natural. And there's also this ambient EQ feature, which adjusts the color temperature of the screen to match its surroundings. I kind of think of this like True Tone on an iPhone. Now let's talk about the sound. I'm going to be honest, it's not going to win any awards here. It gets the job done. It can help you hear instructions for your recipe, set timers, hear the news, listen to a podcast, or just hear the video. The quality of it is not even as good as the Google Home Mini or the Amazon Echo Dot. And unfortunately, you won't really hear any low end on this thing, so you're not gonna buy it for its sound. But here's one thing that you will buy it for, home control. It's really simple. There's a lot of options here. You just swipe down from the top. You can see things like the lights. So if you click on that, I can go and click on the lights so you can control the brightness of it manually. So it's controlling this right here. You can just turn it off. You can adjust the colors, things like that. Oh, I just love this thing, it's so simple. You can also go to media, so if you happen to have another speaker or Google Home device, you can actually broadcast the music or whatever media to that as well. And then there's broadcast here, which is kind of like an intercom for all of your Google Home devices. Dinner's ready. Got it, broadcasting now. Dinner's ready. And then there's a camera option. So if you have Nest devices like the Nest Hello doorbell or one of the Nest cameras, you can actually see it on the Google Home device. So it just loads it and then you can see who is at the door and hear it. Someone's at the front door. And then the other thing you can do is you can view rooms. So you can see each and every room and the different devices that are in there, which is really cool. While smart displays like the Echo Show seem to make a lot of sense in the kitchen, this works in multiple environments. It works really well in the kitchen for your recipes. It can work at your front door so you can see different things outside. It works in your living room or in your bedroom. It just fits in many, many areas. It's so intuitive. It's so powerful. I'm really blown away at what this little device can do. And honestly, a lot of that comes down to the software. So while the Amazon Echo Show relies a lot on your voice and tapping on specific areas on the screen, the Google Home Hub relies on simple gestures and cards. So you just swipe through it and everything is nice and big and easy to tap on. Yeah, so you can just swipe up or down to access different things. So whether it's content consumption, finding out more about your schedule or just getting things done. And you may think, wait, that's really simple. How do I control different things like the settings? Instead of having to type things on a virtual keyboard on the screen, you can just use your phone, which I find to be way more intuitive and easy for me. And in terms of consuming media on here, it is really easy. You just cast it to it. So if you're on YouTube, you just click on the cast button, choose the living room display, and it'll show up here. So you can do that with YouTube and other video platforms, even music. You can actually ask for driving directions on your Google Home Hub. It'll display it for you there, but also push it to your phone. Give me directions to the Staples Center. The best way to get to Staples Center by car is via I-5 North and will take about 25 minutes in light traffic. 
You can see the full route on your phone. And it already pushed a notification to me on my phone. One of the greatest things about the Google Home Hub is the Google Assistant. You can interact with the Assistant in a way that's conversational rather than specific like you would have to do on an Amazon Alexa device. And when you ask it multiple questions, it can remember the context. So if you happen to ask multiple questions about a specific person, it can remember that so you don't have to say the person's name over and over again. And if you have multiple people in your home and you sync up their information, their Google account with the Google Home app, it can actually recognize their specific voice. And because of that, whenever you have questions about your schedule, your reminders, or anything like that, it can give specific information for you. What's my schedule? There's one entry today. You're starting a two-day event called Seals. I actually find that using the Google Home Hub is quite the joy to use. Accessing settings and different features is really quite easy. One thing that's really great about the Google Home Hub is the Google Services integration. So if you have Google Photos and you take a picture on your iPhone or Android, it can sync up with your Google Home Hub if you set up an album to display. And you can even make phone calls using Google Duo. And to be fair, I did notice a little bit of lag when I was initially setting up the device. I imagine it was just downloading some updates and that was causing that lag. Since then, I haven't really noticed anything wrong with it. So overall, I think that the Google Home Hub is priced at the impulse buy territory. It just offers so much, is so nice to use that you just kind of have to get one of them. So if you've never had a smart home device in your home or you want to expand on it, this is definitely a must have. Of course, if you want to get your hands on this or anything else that I mentioned in this video, there are links down below in the description. And I have many, many other videos in this smart home series, so go check that out with the link in the description and I'll see you there. If you found this video helpful, please share it with someone else. Maybe it'll benefit them as well. And I would really appreciate it if you subscribed and hit the bell icon to be notified of when I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching This Is Tech Today. Until next time.